Hello students, in continuation with the digital education initiative of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam Technical University, here is another lecture from the subject VLSI technology having subject code KEC053 and I am your faculty Sangeeta Mangesh from Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, JSS Academy of Technical Education, NOIDA. Today we are going to, once like we have already studied all the processes which are involved in IC fabrication, we are coming to the end of this particular course and prior to complete the course, we need to know how exactly the device and circuit fabrication techniques are like special techniques are being incorporated and that is what we are going to cover in these, this particular lecture. So, the contents of the lecture include achieving specific results in IC device fabrication and in order to do that, whatever like processes are being used those processes we are going to check out that is device isolation, plan, uh, device planarization, then some other like modified techniques also we are going to see. At the end of this lecture, I ex as a student I expect you to describe different device iso isolation techniques that are used in IC fabrication. You should be able to uh, describe the lift off technique and you need, uh, you should be able to explain the role of planarization. Uh, chemical mechanical polishing and gettering in IC fabrication. So, let us start. So, first thing when you fabricate different different devices within the integrated circuit, you need to isolate them and there are specialist techniques. We have seen already different oxidation processes which are used for isolation, but here there are some modified techniques which are popularly used or typically used in IC fabrication. So, integrated circuit is basically comprising of active and passive components and one of the essential component or requirement is to uh, make them electrically isolation like provide a proper electrical isolation between these components so that you can have uh, suitable flexibility and to achieve that there is first approach and that this first approach is basically to provide a reverse bias p-n junction between the two regions opposite in conductivity that is uh, will result into very low leakage current in the order of pico ampere. Second approach is to provide MESA isolation by fabricating these devices on different islands of uh, which are uh, which have grown oxide regions within the etched uh, mode that is you have special uh, what you call areas where you are uh, designing those uh, integrated circuit like uh, typical circuits or devices and you have separate tubs which are uh, lined by the oxide layers. So, both MESA isolation and oxide isolation need significant thinning of signal, uh, signal crystal wafer to form the active layer. Now, what are these isolation techniques that is MESA isolation techniques and oxidation techniques we are going to see. So, this is a typical MESA, meta, like MESA isolation technique what we have seen. Now, here if you see carefully you have the P substrate and you have two N wells getting formed. These N wells are first forms. They, they are isolating the device, okay, these two devices and then the individual bipolar junction transistors are fabricated within that. So, this is how, this is basically a triple isolation technique where first you have two different wells getting formed and then you have fabricating, okay, then you are fabricating within those wells, you are fabricating your individual devices. Second technique is here where you have these areas, diffusion areas. And these diffusion areas are basically separated. Here you are having P area, here you are having P and in between that you are having N. And this N area, okay, this N area has got different layers that is N, P, N, this is how. So, you have base, emitter and then collector isolated. So, this is basically a two-sided process where these are, okay, your isolation is provided with individual opposite polarity, uh, what you call areas opposite polarities N and P both are isolated okay they are isolated with each other and in among like in between that N area you are fabricating differently this. So, here just see there is no such isolation over here you do not have such kind of isolation over here here it is single well being created here you are providing separate isolation techniques. Third one third one now please understand here you are having much uh, larger what you call wafer width or wafer dimensions are much larger, thickness of the wafer is much larger. Whereas, here you have approximately 150, like almost 100 micrometer less thickness is required in such cases. Whereas, here also you have large amount of, but the actual 
dimension of the device or the di thickness where the device is being fabricated is only approximately 50 micrometer okay maximum 50 so 5 to 15 micrometer area or thickness only is your device actual circuit getting fabricated rest is your okay your uh, lower portion which is ex addition like extra portion which needs to be removed when you are going for so this is how you are uh, go going for packaging i told we have seen in the last lecture so similarly this is the uh, uh, junction isolation belt. So, every junction, every NPN junction what is being formed is isolated in a different manner. Here you have well, here you are having double isolation adjacent, here you are having double diffusion getting created. Just see the difference. You have double diffusion getting created and you are having different okay ways in which it is being isolated. Another is a technique here, it is the oxide isolation where you are having silicon dioxide layer being formed. Here you are forming a grooves where you want to de define or you are, your specific design device is being fabricated within this area. So, you are isolating them by forming grooves and these are the areas see after that you are growing the polycrystalline like epitaxial polycrystalline silicon is grown there you will form your devices and these are see these are the isolation areas. So, this is your silicon dioxide which is isolating two devices separately. So, here you will fabricate this is the N area where you can fabricate, fabricate your PMOS, here you can fabricate some other device, here you can fabricate some other device. So, here you are having the poly, okay, you have this silicon dioxide layer which is like you have oxide isolation being providing the complete isolation between the devices that are being fabricated as a part of your integrated circuit. Another technique which is being used for device isolation is called as local oxidation okay, or low cost. Now, this low cost process is also popularly being used and this process involves growing of silicon dioxide thin layer and then silicon nitride. So, silicon dioxide and silicon nitride is being patterned in such a way that you have boron okay, field implant being introduced. Now, what is happening is you have okay, then you grow the oxide. So, this is how your, this is your silicon nitride and silicon, okay. So, you, silicon dioxide and silicon nitride, then you introduce boron impurities and once, okay, then you strip the nitride pad. So, once, okay, after that when you strip this nitride pad, you will, you will be left with, okay, you will be left your oxide, okay, you will be left with only, this is, this is what is the, then you will deposit the oxide over here. So, your oxide deposition can happen over here and your device will be automatically. So, this is how, see you will grow the field oxide and then remove the nitride. So, once you remove the nitride, you can, okay, you can have the device or the boron, uh, what you call diffusion, what you have created that can be, have, okay, that can have isolation areas or it will have separate demarked areas separated by some distance where you can uh, grow your oxide layer and isolate these devices. Here is another way in which, you now one of the drawback of this since we are using for uh, nitride layer for stripping them, there is something known as a beak region getting produced. Now, it is like a bird's beak, whatever bird's beak happens like it, that kind of uh, area is getting grown. Now, here also just see, here you are having nitride pads, you are having pad oxide, silicon wafer and you are going the oxide inside also, see with this nitride pad and once you remove those nitride pads, automatically you are having this kind of like you do not have straight this kind of straight structure, but you have something known as beak like structure and this is known as bird's beak. So, this is one of the drawback of this particular low cost process or local oxidation process where you are using nitride layer. So, the main drawback of this technique is so called bird's beak. The surface area is lost because of the encroachment. The advantage is it is a simple process. It gives you very high quality oxide layer because it is locally grown or thermally uh, stable oxide will be uh, like it is thermally grown oxide. So, it will be very stable and of very good quality that is what is the reason uh, that, that is what is the advantage of low cost process. But you do not have uh, what you call sharp edges you have something known as bird's beak getting produced because unevenness or there is mismatch in the uh, when the nitride uh, stripping is being used to remove the oxide layer. So, in that case like that is what is the drawback. Another technique is known as trench isolation. So, instead of like you have uh, separate areas, here you are creating trench to isolate your device. Now, how it is being, so you have something known as a shallow trench isolation or STI. It is also one of the popular technique which is used 
uh, for basically uh, low, when the technology is uh, sh shrunk like um, uh, for low, uh, minimum like when the sizing is a major issue the device technology has gone be, uh, be beyond 0.5 micrometer this is quite uh, popular uh, technique which is being used and you here you can avoid the bird's beak problem what we use uh, what you encounter in low cost process now how that process happens just see you have nitride and you have pad oxide now this nitride and pad oxide you will create okay you create a linear oxide layer into it now once linear oxide layer is being created you will isolate this oxide layer just see this is how you have pad nitride and this is the oxide so what you will do you will create okay cvd will be used for filling up the oxide then you have entire oxide layer getting or filling up this entire trench and then you will eliminate this this nitride layer will be removed this will be removed so finally you will get a trench where you will have your oxide layer and here you can fabricate your devices so you will have a trench this is the trench that can okay that can isolate your separate devices so this is one of the technique another technique for isolation is self alignment process this is very common very popular and largely being adopted because it is like the process is designed in such a way that you have you don't have any issue of misalignment now what is being done the subsequent processes are carried out one after the other in such a way that the the, the dimensions or the subsequent uh, what you call uh, device parameters or device uh, what you call uh, parts are exactly aligned with the previous one so one of the example is like here you will see that the contact metal is aligned in such a way that the there is no like precisely you will have the layering of the contact metal and you can establish the contacts in case of your metal like generally you use for gate or you use it for metal contacts so exactly the alignment will be happening so there will won't be any electro migration or any misalignment so one of the technique which is being used for gate alignment is being shown over here just see your silicon dioxide is there your gate will be fabricated and this gate will be used as the mask for the subsequent process now automatically since this gate area is already isolated your diffusion will be exactly matched this gate is working as a mask so automatically adjacent to gate you will have exact formation or gate itself will be working as the mask and it establishes like uh, it works like you can have drain and source areas automatically will be exactly aligned precisely as they should be with the gate and of the exact size as required uh, to cover the channel region so thus the device fabrication uh, process becomes faster uh, we know already the gate is three times smaller than the like uh, than the entire like the uh, diffusion area or uh, therefore automatically like when you have a smaller dimension device is getting designed such self aligned process becomes very easy speedy fabrication is possible and uh, uncertainty fa factor related to misalignment or random gate misal misalignment can be uh, overall eliminated this is the biggest advantage of this process then comes the planarization so to maintain the step coverage you carry out planarization or uh, without any continu discontinuity you want the fine lines or secondly you need planarization to be carried out for pattern transfer of fine lines over uh, the wafer to cover like when it over the wafer becomes impossible the techniques or uh, of surface flattening is thus increasingly important addressing the issues both for local as well as global planarization you know when different fabrication you know, processes are being carried out there is uh, definitely the surface of the wafer is not uh, uh, remaining uniform and you need to address that issue and we have seen in the metallization also plan global as well as local plan planarization is to be carried out one of the approaches to attain uh, sputtering of like uh, you can attain by uh, sputtering of sio2 with application of bias voltage uh, on the target so another method is part of planarization is chemical mechanical polishing which is most recommended technique for global planarization to for the entire wafer surface it is basically uh, removal of the surface layer with fine control of the temperature and ph solution which is used as a uh, or slurry or the medium 
The process has to be carried out with utmost care and uh, dissolution of the polishing agent may be uh, like any if the polishing agent is contaminant or any like it has got some chemical property which can hamper the uh, material which is like already existing onto the wafer that can uh, affect the device operation and you do not want that to happen. So, you have to ensure that the process happens very carefully, very precisely so that the operational reliability of the system or the circuit what is being uh, fabricated on the uh, wafer is not getting uh, affected. So, you have to ensure that and the end point like normally when you carry out this uh, CMP we have seen in the previous uh, this thing also whenever we are carrying out CMP you have to ensure that continuous monitoring or measurement of the electrical properties of the uh, different like parts of the wafer is to be continuously monitored that is either monitored using optical source or used using electrical like you have some uh, four van der Waal process or four point probe process or some other process where you continuously monitor the electrical properties and you carry out this process. So, lot of precision, lot of perfection is required in this process so that there is no degradation in the uh, reliable like reliability of the wafer or uh, uh, quality of the like any dielectric breakdown or uh, some degradation of this any of any, any of the performance uh, 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 is not impacted through this CMP. One of uh, after CMP planarization you have something known as get ring. IC fabrication start, starts with premium quality of wafer. However, during the process there are uh, these wafers become victim of various metallic, organic, inorganic materials that can contaminate the wafer or damage its crystalline surface and thereby impacting the overall yield. So, get ring is essential to drive away these active metallic or organic atoms within the wafer from the active regions. Generally at the back of side of the wafer it, this particular process is being done. We drive away those metallic impurities or whatever uh, what you call impact factor particles are there whatever particles which are which can hamper the device performance when the device starts conducting you try to drive them away either by using some uh, what you call rapid thermal annealing or some other process through that they are moved they are moved away towards the back side of the wafer and they do not compromise they do not interfere with the device uh, operation they do not hamper the electrical properties and thereby reliable operation of the device so this is what is known as gettering there are uh, this is uh, elect, uh, the uh, like you try to uh, drive away the impurities and uh, this technique is basically used to remove the, uh, the impurities from the active area. So, you do not want that active area of the device to get affected and therefore, there are different techniques. One of the technique is known as intrinsic, intrinsic get, gettering, another known as introducing like you can carry out intrinsic gettering by uh, making the device intrinsic. So, that uh, the device properties are like single crystal uh, surface will be like you carry out that. So, that single surface uh, single crystal uh, structure will be there and it will not get affected like those uh, you do not have vacancies you do not have any uh, uh, what you call uh, 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 interstitials so that the impurities do not uh, move from that loca from location where they are existing. And then another uh, method is to introduce halogenic compounds or dopant sources during the diffusion so that they also uh, tra uh, keep track of or uh, this, these impurities over there itself. Third one is halogenic oxidation and last uh, la another one is mechanical damage using sandbag or physical abrasion you carry out so that you have you create the charge care traps for the charge carriers where these charge carriers can um, get into those uh, traps and reside there itself and do not move anywhere else. Then another method is to provide a glossy layer. If you do not have any uh, dangling bonds on the top, you have perfect uh, shiny like perfect uh, bond satisfied layer on the top, you do not have any reflection, you do not have any energy like you do not have any inner, like energy getting, uh, you do not have any basically uh, glossy layer being like po surface perfectly polished, no dangling bonds, no traps for the uh, what you call charge carriers. So, there, there will be minimum impact when the devices are being uh, 
in operation or when the electrical characteristics of the device will be unchanged. Last one is the chemical cleaning which will automatically remove or eliminate all the impurities. So, these are the basic gettering techniques which are being used for eliminating the contaminants from the active area of the wafer. And lastly, you have specific technique which is known as lift off. Now, lift off refers to the process of exposing a pattern into photoresist or some other material depositing a thin film such as metal or dielectric over the entire area and then washing away the photoresist or the material to leave behind the film only in the patterned area. So, this is basically a technique of getting a specific area or demarking the specific area. So, in lift off technique you are compromising some area or you are sacrificing some particular layer and thereby like first you uh, like deposit that layer and on the top of it you do some your task and then you remove that layer so that you get the perfect pattern and that is known as lift off. Since you are sacrificing the, that layer, lifting of that layer, the name is being given to the process. Now, how that process happens is elaborated like explained over here. You have something known as photoresist being positioned over here, like photoresist is being done and you have okay, very good resist profile is being shown over here. Then you expose it to the radiation. Once it is exposed to the radiation, you are covering, okay, film covers all the PR edges and no scope of PR to get in contact with the solvent. So, you do not have any process. So, here, okay, so you can have, so this is what is the case being happened. Then what you do is, then you remove this entire thing, okay. Then what is being done, this is what is the film covers all the PR edges and there is no scope for getting in contact with the layer. So, this is what is happening in this case. Now, what do we do? Please understand, before developing the photoresist, after exposure, you can soak sample in a tollin for 5 minutes. This creates the, this basically hardens the PR and then surface like PR once becomes hardened, deep uh, what you call uh, UV exposure will further uh, like will not like can also lead to this effect. Once hardened, you can develop the resist slightly longer than the normal time and following profile can be easily obtained. So, what we have done? We have hardened it, you can change the profile and then you have layered the metal into it to get a specific characteristics of the device like this. Suppose you, you have wanted this kind of profile the of metal on the substrate and you were not able to easily attain it. So, what you have done is you have sacrificed this PR, first you have deposited PR, hardened it then layered metallization layer onto it and eliminated. Now, please understand this metallization is sacrificed, this layer like both the metallization, this metallization layer is sacrificed, this metallization layer is sacrificed because it was above PR. So, when you lift off it, so this entire thing got lifted off, this entire thing got lifted off and you are left with desired pattern. So, all such designed, desired complicated patterns which are essential in MAME design or electromechanical designs for specific applications, if you need that can be implemented, that can be fabricated easily using these lift off techniques. Another, okay, another is you can make use of negative photoresist by adjusting the exposure and developing time. It is much de uh, easier if you use, okay, than the for positive photoresist. Negative photoresist is much helpful, uh, very much helpful in this lift off technique. How it is? Just see, with a negative, okay, you are using a PR, you are exposing it. Now, you know negative photoresist will create opposite polarity thing. So, here what you are doing is, see, you are exposing it, you are uh, now creating the substrate, okay, you are creating the profile with exposure and you will then layer, this is the metallization layer, metal layer being deposited and then you lift off it. So, this is getting sacrificed, this is getting sacrificed and the pattern what you get is precise. So, clean lift off will give you exactly like thin pattern what you wanted. So, for desired impact or to create desired profiles in case of metallization, 
if you want typical conducting areas to be defined or typical what you call cantilever operation or some other things you want to design uh, under such conditions the specific design can be attained specific design uh, goals can be achieved using this lift off technique so this lift off technique is essentially used for only specialized areas to be earmarked or specialized design requirements exist as far as your ic fabrication is concerned another lift off technique is here you have under layer this is pr you are depositing this metallization just see by using uh, two different uh, types of photoresist on the top and bottom uh, one can precisely pattern the resist and underline uh, like uh, undercut the bottom resist to form very nice lift off profile you must use the resist of different solvents and chemistries to avoid intermixing which will make the process inconsistent so you have to ensure that the um, um, resists which are being used are pro having proper chemical properties and there is no intermixing so that the top layer can be positive or negative and you can lift off up to 2/3 of the bottom layer thickness this process allows very clean lift off using positive ron resist so here also just see you have precise technique being used both positive and photo negative photoresists are used and the lift off is very clean very nice so this is how you can attain the specific target specific desired results if you want the complex formation or complex areas to be earmarked so in this lecture we have seen specific specialized techniques which are used for device isolation typical techniques which are used for device isolation such as mesa isolation oxidation lucos that is local oxidation trench isolation and we have seen uh, gettering like uh, to avoid the what you call to eliminate or drive away the impurities we have seen gettering then we have seen uh, cmp plan for planarization and finally we have seen specialist technique which is used that is known as lift off so at the end if you are able to describe any two techniques used for device isolation if you are able to explain uh, explain the role of gettering chemical mechanical polishing and planarization in ic fabrication if you can narrate the process of lift off by creating or or you can uh, like comprehend that particular process with each schematic you can indicate how those specialist areas can be earmarked or can be like you in uh, when you have scale like, like under the like uh, to create specific profiles in specially scaled devices so if you are able to explain those i'll we can proceed further for the last lecture which deals with the fabrication of cmos as a whole so thank you god bless and good luck